where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. Will you give him your best praise in this place? I will bless the Lord. 
Lord, here we go. He has done great things for me, say. He has done great things for me, so I will. He has done. He has done great things for me, so I will. Oh, he has done. He has done great things for hey, me, so I will. Hey, he has done. He has done great things for me, so I will. Sing again. He has done great things. He has done great things for me. He has. He has done great things. And he keeps on doing great things. He has done great things. He has done great. He has done great things. I'm so grateful this morning that he keeps on doing great things over and over, over and over, over and over, and he keeps on doing great things. He has done great. He has done great things for me. He has done great things. He has done. He has done great things for me. So I will bless the Lord. Everybody, 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 say. And open your mouth and exalt the King of glory, the Lord God, strong and mighty, our ruler, our way maker, our provider. The word of God says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord with his peace and his love and his joy and his serenity. Will you just lift your hands all over this sanctuary? Come on and say, God, I know that I was created to worship you, so I'm going to do what I was created to do. Come on, say, I worship you, oh God. I worship you. I worship you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's sing it together. Everybody sing, I do. I do worship you. I do worship Can I get you to just lift your hands in this place and sing with us? I do. I do worship. I do worship. Oh, I do worship you. Come on, you know what everybody's singing it. For your goodness sake. For your goodness and your glory. For the joy. For the joy inside your story. For the peace. For the peace you gave to me. For the day you set me. For the day you set me. Set me For your goodness. For your goodness and your glory. For the joy inside. For the joy inside your story. Now make it personal. Sing, I do. I do. Your song. I do. I do. Yes, I do. Hey, I do. Worship you. Worship you. Hey, I'll do what I was created to do. Hey, Say, 
You're so faithful. I've never known him to leave your side or forsake you. Come on, he's a faithful God. Say, he's so faithful. I can call on him in the midnight hour. He'll always be there. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. He's so faithful. He'll carry me when I'm at my lowest point. When I feel like I can't make it on my own. He's so faithful. He's so faithful. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes. Say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. And I tell the world about it. No, I'm not ashamed. No, no. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you.
see, see, see. Yes, Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm not going to wait on number y'all. But I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad about it. Because Wanda, today is the best day. Today is the best day for the rest of your life. Because on today, some of you need to get your joy back. Some of you need to get your praise back. Some of you need to get your hope back. So we're going to give it a real good 30 seconds. And we're going to celebrate like today is the best day of the rest of our life. You ready? One, two, three, go. Hey, come on. You don't know what your neighbor been going through. If I were you, I'd take a look down my road and I'd tell a neighbor, this is a praise road. And everybody on this road got to give God a praise. If I were you, I would challenge my neighbor to give God a praise. Some of you ain't celebrated all year. High five your neighbor and say, welcome to 2023. We made it. We made it. We made it. Act like you made it. Act like you made it. Act like you. 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 Act like you, act like you. We made it, 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 we
we give you the glory we give you the praise now Lord speak to these your people and may we have listening ears and receptive hearts and we'll be so careful to praise you and to give you the glory in Jesus name amen Amen. Come on, clap your hands and bless Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, if some of you only have one shout, I suggest you borrow one from your neighbor. Because we ain't through for the day. Hallelujah. We certainly thank God for being here. Thank God to our leader, our pastor, our Bishop Leroy J. Woodard, Jr., his lovely wife, Lady Gail Woodard, and the, all the other Woodards. To you, my father's children, I don't know about you, but it's just glad, I'm just glad to be not just here. In this day and time, I'm just glad to be anywhere. I wish I had a witness right there. Oh, y'all fanning like y'all Baptists. Oh, we're going to have a good time today. Y'all fanning like y'all Baptists, yeah. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. Didn't have to let me live, but I'm glad to be. Come on, look down the row and tell someone I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. Yeah, we praise God for all of your being here. I know y'all came to hear your pastor on today. He ain't here. Amen. So don't y'all hold that against me. Amen. But I'm going to give you the best that I got. Amen. That's all I can give you. I can give you the best I got. Amen. So happy to have with me on today. I tell you, I, I, you know, it's, it's good to have your own amen crew. When the amens get cold, because <laughs> sometimes they get cold. Uh, but I have my father with me, amen, Dr. Walter Cooper, Jr., amen, Pastor Emeritus of the New Island Baptist Church that he gave uh, 45 years of his life in the service of the Lord. My wonderful, beautiful mother is here. Yeah, now that's my mama. You, you take care of me. Watch out for my mama. Amen. My sister, Minister Ursula and, uh, Cooper is here, and, and my executive administrator from Exusia Christian Fellowship, uh, Sister Kiskala Lowe. It's one of the few times I call her by her, her, her real name. Amen. You know, she's my Stephanie. Amen. There's only one Stephanie Lewis. Amen. Y'all ought to say amen to that. That's, yeah, there's only one Stephanie Lewis, and and God knows I love her dearly. Uh, and I, I'm trying to pattern her after you. you know? Yeah, that's that's a big uh, yeah, it's a big job. But uh, but she's uh, she's been a wonderful student, and so we thank God for being here. Look, we're not gonna be before you long. I I kind of threw some stuff together, and it's probably not gonna meet the normal format of preaching. But we're just gonna go for it today. <laughs> Amen. Come on, say amen. Join me at Exodus chapter 14. Uh, thank you, Brother Josh and my little brother Tor. I'm just waiting for Tor to jump off them drums one day and just, just take off and run down four and eights. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm just, matter, matter of fact, I'm going to run with you, brother. But he younger than me, so I ain't going to be able to keep up with him. But I'm going to say, run, run, Tori, run. Yeah, run, Forrest, run. Yeah, yeah, I sure am. Hey, man, I'm, I'm just, uh, 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 Sister Stephanie, I'm just waiting on that day. Amen. <laughs> uh, woo. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna See, y'all messing with my psyche right now. <laughs> Exodus chapter 14. Let's look at verse, uh, I think this is 11. Thank God for some light over here. You know, as I get older, I need some light. Yeah, because I ain't. Child, I, I can't see sometimes. And uh, thanks to the uh, virtual community who is uh, 
watching in and joining us in service. And I uh, want to say hello to uh, my wife, uh, 30, almost 33 years. She's, she's in Baton Rouge online, and she gave me a good prayer this morning and got me going. So, yeah, I'm, so I'm ready to go get it. Amen. So the Bible said, they said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you, in other words, didn't we tell you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Somebody used to say the word complaining. Yeah. Next verse says that Moses answered the people. He says, do not be afraid. Stand firm. And you will see the deliverance uh, the Lord will bring you today. The reason why some of us can't see the deliverance that God has for us is because we won't be still. We won't stand firm. We too busy trying to do God's work. But he says, stand firm, stand fast, and you will see the deliverance the Lord brings you today. The Egyptians, catch this, the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight. Uh, Mama had, I got to stop right there. The Lord will fight for you. Look down your road and say, neighbor, the Lord's going to fight for you. So we need to stay out of God's way so he can fight for us. Now catch this, because here's the catch right here. Then the Lord said to who? You got to catch that. He didn't talk to the people. He talked to the leader of the people. Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff. Stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I want to skip to that last verse, 18th verse. The Egyptians would know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. If we would just be still and let the Lord fight our battles, he will make your enemies your footstool. And he will use the very people that are trying to get you and pull you down. He will get his glory through those same individuals because he's going to force them to be a blessing to you. Look down your row and say, neighbor, stop crying and move forward. Amen. Stop crying and move forward. See, that's stinging some of y'all right now. Because some of you came in here crying today. But there was an old song that if you hold your peace. Come on, Mother Will Vernon. Let the Lord fight your battles. Then the victory shall be ours. Don't y'all get quiet on me. That word exodus, it bespeaks a going out. It was the story of the Israelites going out of Egypt. And you know that was not an easy task for them to go out of Egypt. Because a lot of them, that's all they knew was Egypt. They were born into slavery. That was the only job they had. And then they would die in slavery. And many of you have watched the Discovery Channel and the History Network. And you know how 
it was the Hebrews, it was the Israelite people who actually built the majority of the pyramids and all of the structures that are now in Egypt. And they built them so well, catch this, that they still stand today. But God raised up someone right from the midst of them called him Moses because they drew him forth out of the water. Now here's the catch. Many, many of you have gone out of 2022 and you are launching into the potential of 2023. Yet some of you are still crying over 2022. You're crying over the failures. Can't hear nobody praying. Over 2022. The heartaches. Over 2022. The disappointments. Of 2022. Even the missed opportunities. Of 2022. But I'm here to tell you on this morning. There are some things that occurred in your past that you quite simply need to leave it in your past. There are some people that time has separated you from. There are some circumstances, some incidents that you've been separated from. And yet because you feel like you missed something, you're still holding on to yesterday can I get a witness you're still holding on to the fact you used to have coke bottle figure but now you can't wear what you used to wear see I know I'm going to get no amens right there some of you don't praise them like you used to. Remember when you first got free? You were the first person at the door. You were the last person to leave. But now, you've grown accustomed to being blessed. You've grown accustomed to being above and not beneath. You've grown accustomed to being the head and not the tail. And when those things don't come together, it causes you to feel a certain kind of way. And when you start feeling a certain kind of way, the first thing, Minister Nathan, is that we do is that we start crying. Because things aren't like they used to be. I don't have the money. I used to have. Seems like my opportunities are drying up. I was better off when I was in the club. Can't get no witnesses in here. I was better off when I was on the corner. At least we all drank from the same bottle. I come to church and you look at me like I got a sign on my back. That say, kick me when you feel like it. Can't get no witnesses. At least when I was in the dope house, we smoked from the same square. Oh, can't get no witnesses again. Puff, puff, pass. That was the rotation. And when you messed up the rotation, woe be unto you. If you puff, 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 and don't pass, can I get a witness in there? I'm trying to come down your row and make it relevant because there are times when we have tears because we're experiencing hurt. We're experiencing loss. Our emotions are all in an uproar. And physically, tears are nothing more. And drops of saline fluid 
And for those of us who wear contact lenses, we know all about saline fluid. Did you get caught without your saline fluid? That stop sign won't look like a stop sign because your vision is not clear. You better jump on board right now because the sole purpose of tears is to lubricate the surface between the eyeball and the eyelid. It assists in keeping our vision clear. So every now and then it's all right to have some tears. Because tears wash out stuff. Tears will wash out the doubt. Tears can wash out the pain. Tears can wash out the fear. Tears can wash out the anxiety. Why? So you can see the salvation of the Lord. Figuratively, tears are physical expressions of joy, grief, sorrow, or pain. Now, I found this out, Minister M.C. Marshall. Because the tears and the word tears have the same meaning. I wish y'all would stay with me. The word tears, T-E-A-R-S, and the word tears, T-E-A-R-S, have the same meaning. Because it talks about to be torn into pieces. So when you tear a piece of paper what are you doing you're tearing it into smaller pieces but why did you cry because your soul your heart has been torn into pieces you don't understand why God took grandma but he left Uncle John who like thunder chicken. And for those of you, you say folks don't know what thunder chicken is, they call it thunderbird. You, you, you can't figure out why God took grandpa and cousin Earl the crackhead is still living. But when you live long enough, you find out that God took them because they were ready. And sometimes God leaves people on record because they're not ready to leave here. And because of that, it causes us sometimes to, to cry tears, but also to cry on the inside. Your tears are expressed during times of great joy. Yeah, we got our spring work of the day. Luke 7, 38. Y'all jump there with me real quick. Because there was, there's a woman, all right, son, thank you. She stood behind him at his feet. Bible says weeping, same thing as crying. And began to wet his feet with her tears. Why was she crying? Because she had lived, according to the word, a sinful life. Is there anybody in here? Oh, ain't nobody. Oh, y'all, come, come, on, boy, y'all. Ain't nobody here live no sinful life. But when you get in his presence, when she recognized his awesomeness, he was not on his way to see her. She heard that Jesus was passing by. And what did she do? She got something very valuable together. They call it the alabaster box. I wonder, is there anybody in here willing to break their alabaster box? Something that's important to you. Simply to anoint the Savior. The Bible says she wiped them with her hair, kissed him, poured perfume. On his feet. Even when the disciples said, man, we could have made some money. Off of that. And he slightly rebuked them and said, no, y'all, y'all leave her alone. Because, see, that's how some of us need to be. We need to start learning how to let go stuff. 
that's valuable and important to I know I'm teaching to you because y'all looking at me real mean, but it's all good. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Tears also come through great hurt and pain. Jeremiah 9 and 1, uh, this going to come up. Uh, Elijah, the prophet Elijah, listen here. One day he was the man. One day he was the man. Killed the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. Did all that hard work. And then he got an email. Oh, we got the wrong one. I'm reading the wrong one. I'm sorry. Great hurt and pain. No, that's Jeremiah. Jeremiah, when Jeremiah looked back and he saw the destruction of Jerusalem, he said, oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears that I would weep both day and night for the slain of my people. Hunt your name and say, neighbor, that's some real hurt. That's real hurt. And every now and then, trouble get in your way. Make you cry sometime. Sister Samson, make you lay awake at night. But hunt your neighbor and say, that's all right. You know why? Because Jesus can still fix it. Oh, don't make me go Baptist on you. He can still fix it. We rolling for you. Uh huh. Tears also come in the form of great fear. Yeah, you could be bold one minute and you could be crying the next one. Ter who said that? Ter ter you can be doing all that you can do. And when the inexplicable shows up, when the unexplainable shows up, you get frayed real fast. The Bible say Peter as long as he saw Jesus, stepped out that boat. Y'all ever made that step out the boat? But the time he stepped out, the Bible say the waves got a little choppy. The wind got a little contrary. And Peter, because he could not see Jesus, began to sink. Whenever we take our eyes, off Jesus, we're going to sink. You don't have to see him. I'm trying to help you right here. You don't have to see him to see him. I'm going to say it again. You don't have to see him to see him. We used to say we feel him in our hands. We feel him in our feet. He's moving all over us. When the trees bend, we see him. When a child comes in the world, we see him. When the saint leaves the world, we see him. So even when we don't physically see him, we ought to be able to see him. But the Bible says that he began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me. How many of you know that he'll even answer? A desperate prayer. <laughs> Can I get a witness around it? Let me look at this side over here because y'all ain't moving around too much. Don't you know he can still answer a desperate prayer? If he answered a desperate prayer on the cross, if you the one, <laughs> get me and you down from here. <laughs> if he can answer that prayer, if he can deal with that, surely... In this day and time, he can look beyond our faults. Sister Lewis, he can look beyond our faults and see our needs. Speaking of fear, God has not given us. <laughs> no, we haven't. But of power, love, and a sound mind. So why do we fear? That which we don't know about. Why are we prejudiced against that which is different from us? It's because we allow our human side to overtake our divinity. Look down your road and say, you are divine. There are some good qualities that result from fear. I'm picking up some speed. Yeah, respect comes from fear. You think I'm lying? Some of y'all in here learn how to respect the power of the belt. Yeah, 
Because that fear, that fear brought you what? Some respect. I don't know about you, but when you heard the belt clinkling down the hallway, you know how them belt buckles clink or whatever, you know somebody, somebody about to get it. So it brings about what? A spirit of respect. I know, see, I'm, I'm, I'm a relative person. I'm just talking to y'all about what we all have gone through in our life. I ain't deep and wonderful. Uh, uh, fear will get you some knowledge. Yeah, you, don't, you think I'm lying? Put your hand in some fire. You're going to learn real fast. Fire burns. Can't get no help in here. Yeah, see, I grew up in a generation we didn't really know no fear. I mean, we rode skateboards with no helmet. No elbow pads, no knee pads. We rode bicycle. Didn't have no reflectors on it. We drunk from the water holes. Can't get no help in here. We fooled around with lead-based paint. Didn't know about no lead-based base paint. We started up cars in the garage and could have walked in there with carbon monoxide poisoning. That's probably what's wrong with some of us right now, Sister Regina. We got carbon monoxide poisoning when we was kids, and the elevator ain't going to the top right now. But, oh, when you figure out that that ain't going to work for you, we call that knowledge. Because now you know. <laughs> Fear will bring about some obedience. Wish I had a witness in here. I wish Bishop Leroy J. Woodard was here right now because let me tell you something. I feared being in his office, Shawanda. I've been in his office one too many times. I could deal with the principal's office better than I can deal with his office. But let me tell you one thing. You know, when he told me a couple of times, and I don't mind saying he told me a couple of times, I'm the pastor of this church, and you're going to do what I say. So, Stephanie, what I do? Did just what he said do. I learned how to model the expect to be. See, see, they're my, see, they're my old school folks. They're my old school folks right, folks right there. We learned to model. Mother had his model. Hell, she laughing. We learned to model, baby, the expected behavior. If he say be there at, at 7, we was there at 645. Because fear of retribution brought about obedience. <laughs> oh, but when your focus ain't clear, <laughs> our faith begins to be shaken. Our spirituality is compromised. And fear will not only bring tears, but it will also bring doubt. When the disciples want that shit, they said, carest thou not. If we perish. Do you, uh, uh, come on here, SOS band, tell me. Ooh, I see it. Uh -huh. Some of you holy rollers up in here, y'all know y'all was back in the day. Tell me if you still care. See, see, I knew it. I knew it. As soon as y'all heard it, brother, Minister Jason, as soon as they heard it, they jumped right back to 1980, whatever that was. Yeah, tell, y'all, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, it brings back doubt. It brings about, uh, <laughs> bring back anxiety. <laughs> we live, ain't we? Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> ain't gonna get invited to preach nowhere else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bring about anxiety. Elijah, Elijah said, I'm done with all of this. I'm done preaching. I'm done prophesying. Matter of fact, I'm gonna get up under this tree. I'm gonna lay here and I'm gonna die. Because I'm the only one left. Fear brings about anxiety. One day you're the hero, the next day you run it. What a difference. Hunt your name say, what a difference one day makes. Spirit of God came to him and said, hold on, brother. You, you giving yourself too much credit. I got thousands that ain't bowed down to Baal. You ain't the only one. You just the chosen one. Ooh. I just came down somebody's road. You better catch it before you go home. You're not the only one that's going through what you're going through. You're just the chosen one. Because the Bible says there is no temptation that takes man. Such is what is common to man. But God is what? Faith. We can stop it right there. God is faithful. He won't allow you to be overtaken by it. Then fear also brings about 
Depression. What is depression? D. Take away. Y'all know this. Press forward. What does fear do? Fear takes away your ability to progress. It brings about procrastination in the life of the believer. And this is the status that we see in the text on today. The children of Israel found themselves in a situation. And how many of you, every now and then, have found yourself in a situation? God said, uh, uh, I'm going to skip that. God says to Moses, because I'm looking at the clock, I got to speed up. God says to Moses, why are you crying unto me? But if you keep the text open, if you go back and look at your Bibles, what you see is for two verses, you see the children of Israel doing the crying. You see the children of Israel doing the complaining. Why is it that God told Moses, why are you crying? To me, because what did Moses do? Moses made a declaration. The Bible says Moses answered the people. Do not be afraid. Stand firm. Be still. And you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you on today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see Again, because the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. And those instructions are too simple for most of us to follow. Because we like complex stuff. But the Bible makes it simple. If you be quiet. And be still and trust God. The very thing you thought you had to do for your deliverance because you were obedient, it's already done for you. But you got to stand still and know that he is God. I know you got your master's degree. I know you have three or four bachelor's degree, but your mental cannot match God's eternal. Your mental would never match his eternal because we cannot cogitate how he stepped out of nothing, spoke a word, and the stars were formed. Spoke a word and the solar system was formed. Spoke a word and the earth was formed. And then he began to do some detailed work. He separated the firmament from the firmament. There was a firmament above and there was a firmament beneath. And he called one the heavens and he, he called one the earth. And then he populated. Mankind is still trying to figure out, did we evolve from apes or what? Well, if we evolved from apes, let me ask you a question. Why do we still have apes? If we evolved, if there is such thing as a big bang theory, then he is the big and the bang. Mm -hmm. If there is such thing as evolutionism, he is the evolutionary. The Bible says it's in him that we live, move, and have our being. God asks Moses, why are you crying to me? Because on the outside, he made a declaration. But on the inside, he was shaking in his shoes. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He led 1.3 million people out of Egypt. 
Have you ever tried to lead 1.3 million people into nothingness? All you know is the Lord told us to go and we... See, that? See y'all looking at me like I'm crazy, but that's what he did. The Lord said, we're going to go to a land overflowing with milk and honey. We're going to the promised land. Pack up your stuff. We rolling. We out of here. 1.3 million people. On the inside, Moses was doing some of what some of us do every single day. Having anxiety. Having doubt. And maybe even having a little depression. So God didn't address the first part of this to the people. He addressed the first part to the leader. He told him, shut up your crying. You ought to look down your row and tell your neighbor, neighbor, shut up your crying. What you crying over? Come on, work with me. What you crying over? God's already done it. Can't get no help right there. The thing you're crying over... Asking God, when is he going to do it? God is in heaven. What you're asking me for, it's already been done. But all this other stuff is in your way. And you can't see what God is doing. So he says, the people were complaining outwardly. Moses was dealing with this internally and there are some of you right now you dealing with some stuff internally you declare some stuff with your mouth it's going to hurt a little bit but you don't believe it in your heart I'm going to let that marinate just a little bit Minister Lewis, Minister Darren I'm going to let that marinate yeah. yeah you you saying all the right stuff but here do you really believe what you say? Because when you really believe what you say, not only will you stand up at standing time, you will arch your shoulders back. You will lift up your head because you understand one thing. Yolanda Adams had it right. The battle ain't yours. It belongs to the Lord. And so we see in the scripture, God says, basically, the people lack faith, which has activated a fear. And that fear has given birth to tears and complaining. He tells Moses, stop praying. Stop crying. Tell them to stop complaining. And move forward. Ain't that what the word says? Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. You want to look down your road and say, neighbor, you've been crying long enough. You've been lamenting long enough. You've been suffering. Y'all ain't looking at nobody. Y'all looking at me. You've been suffering long enough. You've been walking the floor all night long. Long enough. It's time for you to move on. You ought to be glad, ladies, that he gone. Because since he been gone, you got some money in your pocket. Since he been gone, your self-esteem has gone through the roof. Since he's been gone, you're able to get your hair done and your toes did. Since he's been gone. Oh, y'all don't want to pray with me? Come on, brothers. You ought to be happy she went to go be with Roland. Because now Roland got your problems. Wish I had a witness. Your car got gas in it now. It's Roland's problem now. You ain't got to pay the beautician no more. For the weave. I know she got a receipt, but it ain't hers. I mean, I know, you know, yeah, that, that's Roland's problem now. You ain't got to do no more fingernails and go shopping in the gallery. I hate the gallery. It's too confusing. But that's Roland's problem now. 
It's time for you to move on. Oh, but here's what he tells them. Because they're at a standstill. And I'm trying to push this thing forward, but they're at a standstill. Because there's a sea in front of them. There are mountains around them. And there's a fierce army behind them. But let me tell you one thing. The only thing that's behind you, brothers and sisters, is an army of opposition. A field of conquered foes. And an environment that has worked against everything that you stand for. That's what's behind you. The heartache is behind you. Quit carrying it to your next relationship. Can't get a witness. The missed opportunity. That's your fault. That you missed your turn. On the merry-go-round. Because guess what happens? Those of you who come from my era, there's a little thing that spun around and You can jump on there at the wrong time, Sister Regina, if you want to. You're going to have some knots and some bruises because you jumped on at the wrong time. And some of you have jumped on the wrong time in life. And now you're afraid to get back on. But let me tell you something. As long as God is God, that merry-go-round is still turning. And you got to figure out when it's your time to jump on. And when you jump on, jump on and hold on with all your might. Then what's around you? The only thing that you are surrounded by are mountains that you have the authority to tell get out of your way. But because you are so caught up in your situation, because you really lack the faith, those mountains become boundaries that restrict your movement and your spiritual progress. The very thing in our life that God has given us what we need to move, it has now become our prison. Our self-esteem has become our prison. Our financial issues have become our prison. Our social standing has become our prison. But if God be God, he's greater for us than he who is against us. So ultimately, as I turn my corner, your destiny is found in the sea of opportunity that's in front of you. You may not can see what's in front of you, but trust God, it's there. You may not see the way that God has prepared for you, but take it from me, it's there. God's just waiting for us to step out into the unseen and make the unseen become known. You see, I wasn't there, but... I can imagine when God told Moses, what is it in your hand? And all Moses felt like he had was a staff. God says, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water. And I believe that's all that God wants um, some of us to do is to raise and stretch. When you join with me, take your right hand and just raise it and then stretch it out because when you stretch it out, the Bible said that the Israelites, they didn't go through stepping through mud. The Bible says God had already prepared the way. 
So the Israelites went over on dry ground. And I'm here to tell some of you there's some dry ground that's waiting on you. Do you remember the disciples who had fished all night and caught nothing? They were ready to throw in the towel. They were ready to call it a night. Yet at his word, is there anybody here that has an at his word testimony? Oh, if y'all don't pray with me, that's all right. Because I feel my help right now. Is there anybody here that's had a his word testimony? Because it was at his word. He hung the stars to shine by night and the sun by day at his word. He called us from nothing into something at his word. Every knee has to bow and every tongue has to confess at his word. The very demons that are trying to attack your life at his word. They began to tremble and fear at his word. When you couldn't pay your bills and God said, let it be so at his word. You were ready to give up your marriage and yet God stepped in. And he became the lawyer that's never lost a case at his word. When the doctors told you they couldn't do nothing for you, he became the doctor that's never lost a patient at his word. Stop crying and move forward when you follow his voice and go where you're instructed to go. Don't you know that blessings would chase you? And I wish I had a couple of people that didn't run so fast because every now and then you need to slow down and take inventory and realize that what's chasing you, God designed it to overtake you. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready in 2023 for what God has for me in 2023. Let it overtake me. Say yes. Say yes. If God said it, surely. Come on, Baptist. Surely. If he said it, I don't care if you believe it. If he said it, shall he not bring it to pass? Go into my seat. Number one, don't forget to count. Don't forget to count your blessings. The Israelites were so busy complaining about where they were. They forgot about where the Lord has brought them from. So many people are complaining about where you are right now. But let me tell you one thing. Where you are right now is much better from where you came from. Do you remember when you were down to your last time? Now look at you. Got a 401k. Got an investment account. Live in a nice house. Got two, three cars. See what the Lord has done. If it had not been for the Lord, for the Lord, for the Lord, for the Lord, for the Lord on my side. Tell me, tell me, tell me, where would I be? I'd still be crazy. I'd still be lost. I'd still be caught up. But shut up all that crying. 
and move forward. Number two, uh, stay focused on what the Lord is doing for you. Stay faith focused and goal oriented. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, stay faith focused and goal oriented. In verses 11 and 12, fear will cause you to look back instead of looking forward. There are some people in here right now. You thought your last season was going to be it. You thought your last relationship, it was over. You thought your last fight was going to be your last fight. But I'm here to tell you, here to tell you why. They said, why couldn't we stay in Egypt? What does Egypt represent? Egypt is trouble. Egypt is oppression. Egypt is depression. You mean to tell me you'd rather stay oppressed, depressed, compressed, broken, busted, disgusted, can't be trusted. You'd rather be there than be with the Lord. Let me throw something out here. There's people here saying, why couldn't we stay at 3630 Hatless Street? Why did we have to leave Hatless? You know me, I don't know about no Hatless. Why we had to leave Hatless Street? Somebody may wonder, why did we leave Elgin? Let me tell you something. Stop worrying about why and understand that every step God had a plan and everything is working out for the good of them who love the Lord and to them who are called who are called who are called according to his purpose the Bible says that the very thing that Moses said, God turned right back around and he let Moses know it was all a part of my plan. Because when I get through with Pharaoh, when I get through with the people who tried to hold you down, when I get through with the people who put their mouth on you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use them to lift you up. You want to say it, say it, say it, say it. The very thing that the devil tries, God says, it's a part of my plan. Stay focused on your assignment. God tells Moses stop procrastinating and move on I'm going to look down your road tell your neighbor stop procrastinating and move on stop crying and move on stop lifting your head down but move on because the God that I serve reminds me and I'm going to my clothes that weeping may endure only for a night, but joy, 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 unspeakable joy, joy comes in the morning. When is the morning? Morning is not governed by clocks and calendars. Morning is governed by revelation and truth. Morning is when you wake up. Tell your neighbor, morning is when you wake up. 
and see the salvation of the Lord. Morning is when you stop crying and start moving on. Because the Bible tells me, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus bowed his head, he prayed like drops with sweats of blood. He prayed and he cried because he looked in the cup and he realized that he was going to have to be separated from the Father. But let me tell you one thing. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace is upon him and by by and by by his stripes we are healed. He died then he died but early 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 before the sun came out to shine early before the rooster crowed early while the Jew was on the ground early he got up he got up all power all power all power all power all power in his hands yes Stop crying. We cry like he stayed in the grave, Sister Tara. Deacon Leonard, he got up. Just like he said that he would. He got up. And because he got up, stop your crying and complaining and move forward. What is is what is. Your past is your past. Don't empower it and allow it to reside in your presence. They were at a standstill situation. They felt they couldn't go forward. They couldn't go over the mountains, but they certainly couldn't go backwards. God told his man, the man of God, he told him, the Israelite, I mean, the Egyptians that you see right now, when I get through with them, y'all got to catch that. See some of the sickness that you see right now? When God gets done, he'll get the glory. Because there's no way that you did it. He puts us in situations so we understand that we couldn't do it. It took someone much greater than us. And because that someone lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds my tomorrow. But, but here's the catch. I know who holds. Come on, lift those hands right now. I know. I want to do you know. I want to know, do you know who's holding your hand? Not only does he know your name, but he's holding. He's holding your hand. Even when you're out of options, he's holding your hand. When you're getting negative energy all around you, he's holding your hand. When it seems like you can't go on, God says, now that's when I step in. Tag me in. 
You ever seen the wrestling when when one wrestler has had enough and he can't go any further? What does he do? He tags the next man in. God says, when you gonna tag me in? You've been going through what you've been going through. When you gonna tag me in? You've taken all that you can take. When are you going to tag me in? I've already defeated him. When are you going to tag me in? Why are you still wrestling with the devil in his imps? I just need you. I just need you. I just want you to tag me in. There you go. I wish somebody else would get that over here. Tell your neighbor, tag me in. I'm your paraclete. I'm the one that's walking alongside of you. When you can't go any further, when you can't do no more, when your prayers ain't being answered, tag, tag, tag me in. Are you here on today? The doors are open. Are you here on today? Come on, let Jesus tag you in. He says, bring me all your problems. Bring me your trouble. All ye that are heavy laden and find rest in me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me because my yoke is easy. My burden is light. If you confess with your mouth, what you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead the Bible says you are saved clap your hands if you're saved on today let the devil know I'm saved I'm sanctified I'm filled with his presence I ain't complaining I'm moving forward I'm moving forward I'm moving forward I'm moving forward I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. Where my forward people? Where my forward people? I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. Where my forward people? I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. No more reverse. No more idols. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. You.